We start, as always, with Coach Boynton and a bedlam sweep, two and three days, like a baseball series with a rain out in between, but there was no raining on your parade with back-to-back bedlam wins. As you think back on that, what was most satisfying about what happened in those two games? Most satisfying is that we had to win the games different ways. Uh, as you might expect, both teams made adjustments, um, and we it felt like to me that we were just a more competitive, tougher team which when we play like that, when we win that way, gives me a great sense of pride that the foundation that we've tried to lay is in a very good spot and that our kids are totally bought in to Oklahoma State basketball. You know, the interesting thing, in, in both of those games, it felt like at times the tide might be going against you. The same was true in the Texas Tech game, and yet in all three of those games, you've not only found different ways to win, but you've kind of been able to reverse that tide. What, why do you think that's been able to happen consistently over these last few games, kind of being able to reverse that tide? Well, our kids have incredible will and competitive spirit. And, you know, early in the season, it may have not been the case, but we've gotten so much better. And we've been, you know, so well prepared. Our staff's done a great job preparing the kids that they don't feel like they're ever out of a game. And whether it's down, you know, 12 or, yeah, you know, I, I was sitting on the sidelines on Monday and it felt like we were down about 14 points. And I looked up at the timeout and we were up four. And I was trying to think what was going on. It was like everything was blurred together, partly because we had just played this game two days before. So it felt like just a continuum. And um, a lot of credit goes to, to all those kids who are stepping up. Bryce Williams on Monday was sensational. Uh, and obviously the performance for Kate Cunningham on Saturday is one that will go down in the history books. You know, you were talking about, you know, feeling like you were down by double digits. And truthfully, I must confess that calling the games at times this year, not just in these last couple of games, but at other times I felt that way, is the reason why maybe teams don't separate from you and stay there is because you, you seem to have an explosivity about you where just even Monday, that was so true. It was just in a minute and a half. It's like a nine, nothing run. Boom. That's been the case all year. Do you think that's the reason why it, it sort of has had that feel to it? Yeah, no question. I mean, and we have so many different guys that are capable of igniting that run. Right. Um, Avery Anderson's done it for us. Occasionally Rondell Walker, Bryce Williams, when Ice has been healthy, he's been a guy who's been able to carry us. Caleb Boone's had some unbelievable moments for us, played really well on Monday. And then we know that we got a great closer. And so if, if teams can't separate and they keep us within an area where we just got to make a few plays late, not make this big dramatic run, we got a guy who we feel like we can put the ball in his hands and can carry us home. And speaking of that guy, Cade Cunningham, obviously it was senior night. It was a bit of a of a different senior night for your team with a couple of transfers and Cade Cunningham being a, a one and done as it's called uh, moving on to the professional ranks is most likely the first pick in the NBA draft coming up. But as you think about just in his short time here, what he's done for Oklahoma state, what his long-term impact Cade Cunningham, what that impact will be, what is it? Well, what, what I'll say is you know, for three years, we've tried to lay what we feel like was the groundwork for our program to ascend back up into national relevance. And then he was kind of like the ultimate cake topper, right? The big, beautiful thing that everybody sees and says, man, that's pretty cool. Um, it's like the really nice car that you just have to see it. You don't know everything on the inside. And that's what the work that Isaac Likely and Avery Anderson and Caleb Boone have helped do the last few years. But Kay's really elevated us uh, from an exposure standpoint and has given his teammates a whole lot of confidence that just because he's viewed the way he is publicly doesn't mean that they're not also very capable of helping us win. And to know what's necessary, whether it be scoring 40 or scoring 15 and giving the ball up a little bit more on Monday, he understands the moment as well as anybody I've seen before. There's obviously nothing easy about this season, nothing easy about the past year for anyone, regardless of their walk of life. But now you finish a year with two games in three days at Baylor and at West Virginia. Just some thoughts on those two games and, and, and managing the heavy game workload here at the end as, as we're trying to get these games made up. Uh, certainly a challenge. Uh, but I told our guys, and we talk about it all the time, on the other side of challenge is opportunity. 
And we have an opportunity against, you know, one of the teams that's been arguably the best team of college basketball on the road. Uh, we played them at home kind of as we were turning the corner uh, to in conference play, but we played them without Cade and Rondell. And we were very limited. And so I'd like to see this opportunity with our team full um, and, and more equipped and to see how we handle this circumstance. Because, you know, the last several games have felt like NCAA tournament games. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what these, this week will feel like going there and then having a quick turn, you know, it's kind of experience, you know, we, you wouldn't travel, uh, but Thursday, Saturday is kind of the mode for the NCAA tournament. So we'll, we'll approach it that way. Coming up, the Cowboy baseball team is undefeated through almost the first two weeks of the season. And we'll talk with Josh Holliday when we return. mercy.net slash cowboys ortho for all the ways you love to play academy sports and outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your academy store we'll make this simple it's time to go and get rewarded for it the my 66 app saves you up to 25 cents per gallon of gas that's right up to 25 cents per gallon of gas that means for every fill up you're saving money for your next adventure that's a reward that keeps on going the app is safe and easy. Plus, mobile pay offers fewer touch points during payment. So you can focus on going and saving. Download the MyPhillips 66 app today so you can save more to go more. Phillips 66. Live to the full. Joined now by Oklahoma State University baseball coach Josh Holliday. The Cowboys off to an undefeated start through almost the first two weeks of the season. And let's just start there. What have you liked most about how your team has played here in the first two weeks? Uh, just seeing them on the field has been the, the best part. Um, you know, you, you wait so long to get back at it. And then uh, to see the kids back in uniform competing again has been a lot of fun. See the way they've handled themselves, just the way they've reacted to the situation has been very positive. Um, I think when you break down the games, uh, the pitching to this point has been exceptionally good. We've played very good defense. And then uh, for early in the season, we've hit some balls out of the park and, and created some big innings. So good formula when you're pitching this well, playing good defense and finding ways to score runs and, and kind of chunks, if you will, you, you have a chance to be pretty good. And so far the kids have done a nice job and uh, really just the joy of competition again, of being together and playing. And then the excitement of, of opening a new season and then moving into this new ballpark. All those things have given us a lot, of, a lot of reasons to be happy and a lot of reasons to be looking forward to the very next day to do this again. You've been practicing in the new ballpark for a while. Your offices have been moved over there for a while, but now you've had a chance to play games in there. What's that been like? Um, very different. Uh, very different experience. You know, it's one thing to to practice, but it's a whole nother thing when the lights go on and uh, the crowds have made a huge impression on our team <clears throat> right away. I think probably the involvement of the student body has really stood out uh, in the early stages of home games. I've just seen uh, several hundred students come out and, and make noise and enjoy being at the park and our players have loved that. And then uh, probably just the, the first moments in the park, whether it was the, the first strikeout, first hit, first homer, first victory, you know, all those different things to see those, uh, the kids have fun and uh, celebrate it in this new park. All those things are very memorable. So I would say just every day we live in it, we enjoy it more and more, appreciate it more and more. And, and uh, it's been fun to watch the kids start writing a little bit of new history in it. Is there something even not necessarily about Obrey Stadium, the playing field itself, but anything about the facilities you started playing games that you've really caught yourself or you've heard the players say, wow, this is even better than I expected. Anything that just jumps out that we know how great it is, but there's something even greater than you thought it might be? 
Um, I think the, I think it's just the initial uh, start to each day, the atmosphere that it creates and the, the feeling of walking into that big stadium. And when the sound system goes on, it, it just has a whole different uh, feel that makes you uh, really plug into what you're doing. You know, the stadium itself brings a little bit of grandness to the work you're doing. And then when the fans start coming in, uh, that just simply takes it to, uh, you know, to game mode. So I think that the feeling you get when you walk in, it really elevates your concentration. I think the sights and sounds are, are so new to us and, they're bigger sights and sounds we didn't have before. So that's a lot of fun. And then uh, when they say play ball, it's just a matter of then going back to doing what you love and that's playing baseball. But I do think it impacts the way you feel when you walk on the field, you know, it's a, uh, it's a big atmosphere and uh, it demands uh, ultimate concentration. You know, as you look at your start, you won two at Wichita, came home, beat Little Rock, then beat an Illinois state team that two years ago, the last full season that we had in college baseball, shared the Missouri Valley Conference title with Dallas Baptist and was one win away from a super regional in Louisville. And then obviously a shutout performance against Missouri State. So you're fast out of the gate against some pretty darn good teams and teams with longstanding traditions. Given the fact that the weather was so poor going into the Wichita State Series where you couldn't be outside, how pleasantly surprised are you about how your overall team performance has been given the fact that those two weeks leading into the regular season opener weather-wise were about as bad as they could be. <clears throat> Very pleased, Dave. Um, you know, that was the biggest concern I had was just had we been able to get the players into game shape being indoors for two weeks. And, and that's more just from time on your feet and, and the ability to concentrate for long periods of time, which you simply can't recreate inside. Plus the skills that are hard to practice inside, such as live defense and when the ball goes up in the air, which we know early in the year, the wind shifts around in this part of the country so much from the north or from the south or uh, from the west across the field. So just knowing how we would respond to being back outside, knowing that we didn't really have the, the legs under us just yet, I think our team has responded better than I could have imagined. And, uh, you know, again, a lot of that has to do with the competition amongst the group, uh, who you face in practice. Our pitchers were really good for us to face in practice because of how good they were throwing the ball. So that definitely sped up our hitters growth and needs for adjustments. So I think the team prepared itself by competing with each other. And I would credit the entire group for where they've handled things since we've started. So appreciate their maturity and uh, appreciate their discipline that it's taken to get to this point. You know, as a final thought, it's worth noting in the first game of the Illinois state series, you won that game on a walk off sort of a run and hit play in the bottom of the ninth. Uh, when Justin Campbell delivered and won that game three to two, you used 15 position players in that game. You, 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 as we do this interview, you've had back-to-back -back shutouts over Illinois State and Missouri State. Everyone is deeper in college baseball because of the uniqueness of the COVID year, if you will, for lack of a better term. But, you know, just how strong is your depth? I mean, it's one thing to have numbers but it looks like you have a lot of quality in your pitching staff and a lot of guys you can turn to situationally on your bench from an offensive and defensive standpoint. How big of a deal do you think that can be? Well, I think it'll be a super important. Um, as you know, things can happen without you realizing it or anticipating it. And, and the quality of your team from, uh, you know, from the very beginning will, will pay off over the course of the long season. I think to have depth and guys that can do different things lets you manage the game differently. And to have a large number of guys capable of competing allows your team to overcome injury or, or if someone were to get sick, some of the things that we've seen happen in college sports this year. So uh, the depth of our team will definitely be an important piece of, of navigating the season. It gives us some different ways to strike throughout games. And it's a compliment to the players that we have and, and the ones that came back that we can gel and form a team uh, with this many good athletes in one, in one space. So um, you're right. We have been able to, to use and benefit from having a deep team. And, and we've been able to put a, a good lineup out there every day, even with a few injuries in the early going. So um, definitely something that we're, uh, we're proud of. We appreciate the kids that uh, are, are working so hard each day. The ones that have played have done great. And the others, their time will come. Coming up, the Cowgirls softball team's also off to a great start. And Casey Kendrick sits down and visits with Kenny Gajewski when we return after these messages. Decorative towel. 
a mess. I wiped up a mess. Yeah, you Game day is a go. There's a Bud Light there. ADM milling is really a part of the fabric of the Enid community. So if we were to have lost them, it would have been more than the 70 jobs that they employ. OG&E, the city of Enid, and the Enid Regional Development Alliance were all great to work with. Not only does it allow for the growth of the new mill, but also the power is there to make that happen for the future. Welcome back to the show, and we are joined now by Kenny Gajewski, the head coach of the Oklahoma State Cowgirls softball team. Coach, good to have you with us on the show. Appreciate you having us back here. You know, Coach, I was thinking uh, if you go back March 11th a year ago, you guys beat Wichita State, the season comes to an end, and it's almost a full year. February, early February, you get back on the field and get a chance to take on Arkansas. Just explain what that was like to, to have gone and have it abruptly stolen and, and ended and then have it all start back up and finally get back out on that field. You know, I, I don't know that we have enough time to give you the emotional roller coaster that this program and every collegiate athlete who had a season ripped away. Um, uh, what that entailed and how they felt and, and everything that they've gone through. That could be a good story for a different day. Um, but to be honest, the best thing about this is, is we're back. And uh, it may not be perfect. It may not be with a full house. It may not be uh, maskless. It, it may not be just exactly what we've been used to. Um, but we are back. We're playing games. Um, it seems very normal except for the fact that um, I'm wearing a mask at third base. Well, and you know, the other thing, Coach, it's interesting. I've had a chance to talk recently for preparation for your games to a lot of head coaches uh, that, that you guys will face. And many of them have talked about how COVID affected them. And I, and I think we've moved past it. We're playing. Hey, that's all in the rearview mirror. And, and I think playing is the best medicine. But they've talked about how this particular kid maybe had some family that really got sick. And they're just now coming back. And this kid didn't, uh, you know, didn't necessarily – she put her priorities in a different location, and that's a little bit different. And I mean, every coach has talked about that. And so while we have moved on, it, it, it's, still, it's still lingering a little bit right now. I think it's going to take a while for us to get back to a sense of normalcy in that effect. Um, all of us have been affected now. Um, I mean, I've, I can remember for my, myself, I was like, man, I don't really know anybody who's really been affected. And then all of a sudden it just hit and we lost some family, um, friends, um, friends that have lost lots of loved ones. And, um, and that goes for our kids. I mean, they, they, they've been affected. We all have. And, and so it, it is, it's, um, it's, it's taken a little bit more time than I think any of us thought. Um, but the best medicine is to be back together. Um, I like to call it our band is back. Um, we still got, they may not be perfect yet, uh, but they're getting there and, and, um, and I think we're on the, uh, the right road. Well, and what I love about that, okay, so the best medicine again is getting the band back together, as you say. You're 13 and one, you have four wins against top 25 teams, you have three against top 10 teams, and I just get a sense you don't even think you're anywhere close to as good as you guys are going to be. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, in a perfect world, I don't want to be playing our best softball right now. I'd love to win each game. That's one thing I want to do. Um, but I'd like to do it where we're continually in this search for getting better each, each day, and we're doing that. Um, we're, we haven't performed offensively yet to, the, to our ability or at least what we think we very we've obviously pitched well we have played really good defense for not being on a field a whole lot we played a ton of games on turf um, it's, that's the first time I think we played more games on turf this year than we played in my entire time here at, at OSU so that's a different deal than playing on dirt so I like where our team's at we're nowhere close to who we could possibly be again that's in their hands and um, we're going to give them that opportunity to, to play and 
practice, and and um, I like I like this team. I like them a whole lot. Well, and, and the one place where you've talked about we still got a long ways to go has been on the offensive side. You know, it's interesting. You you came in emphasizing defense early on, and your offense, you guys were knocking the ball cover off the ball. Now. The defense has been unreal. Doggett in that LSU game was phenomenal. Uh, you look at, you know, at short, you've had some great plays. Pennington has played well. Pitching, Kelly Maxwell and and, uh, and obviously Everly have pitched really well. Now it's it's a, just a matter of getting relaxed. And if you think about it, early in the season, pitching is probably going to be ahead of hitting. And it's with the layoffs, that's probably where we've seen uh, the biggest effect from COVID. Well, we've always been a defensive type team first. We all know that pitching, um, whether you're playing baseball or softball, is going to win championships. You can you can win a lot of games with offense, but when it gets down to the real nuts and bolts of a season, uh, when it gets down to OKC, uh, when it gets down to Omaha for baseball, it comes down to pitching. And uh, you still got to score some runs, but the runs start coming at a premium. And so um, we feel really good about the defense. We feel really good about our pitching that's the first time you know in the last couple of years where we've been in that spot um, we've got some tremendous athletes running around on the on the, this on this field so uh, that really enhances the way we're able to play the defensive game so um, now it's just getting these uh, offensive kids to be offensive um, no more defensive swings no more defensive bat bats I mean we're here to we're, we're here to bang. We're here to hit balls over the uh, fence. We're here to knock the walls down. We're here to put some fear in you, and, and we've got to get our systems there, and I think we're close. Well, and you have been very intentional in how you've built this thing, and you've talked a lot about, you know, boy, we're just better than we were last year, and, and, and next year, boy, we're just better than we were last year. And that's with some really pretty good players that are leaving the program, and you've talked about that. This year, uh, now you throw in the Feebries and the kids that got to come back. You guys had a consecutive win streak that broke an all-time cowgirl record, um, and you've got more depth right now. You've got options. You've got you've got the ability to make moves to motivate, and it's obviously a, a terrific luxury. And, and and ultimately, finally getting to where I think you envisioned this when you first took the job. Yeah, it's been fun. You and I have had the, these talks. I I. Um, I'm in a different spot in my coaching here at OSU. Um, our staff is. We have the ability, to, like you said, to make some changes. We have a lot of talented kids that need opportunities. So the, really the only thing a coach can really control is playing time. And, um, and, and so it's, if for us, it's always, it's always been and will always be. It's not about getting hits. It's not about your average. It's not about how many home runs you've hit. It's the way you compete. I want kids who compete here that are the toughest outs across the country. And they may not hit 350. Two, 280 may, may, may be what it is, but it's the way you go about your at-bats, the way you compete, the way you fight. That's all we want. That's what Oklahoma State's always been about through our history and every sport here. And so um, I don't know why we'd want to be any d d different. I want to embrace what we have, who we are, and be the best at that. And, and um, with the talent, the depth in the roster, um, we have the ability to make some quick changes or just to get your eyes open really quick. And this weekend, Coach, obviously you're finally back at home. No, it won't look the same there either with the limited fans, but the corral is going to be awesome. That's going to be a fun atmosphere in the outfield. But you got Omaha coming in, New Mexico coming in, Tulsa coming in, and as much as anything, finally back at home. Can't wait. Uh, there's nothing like being at Cowgirl Park, and there's nothing like being in front of our fans. I got a feeling if you want to see these games, you can figure out a way to see these games. We got some trees that you can climb. <laughs> we got fences that you can hang on outside. Um, our people here have made tremendous um, strides in, in uh, figuring out ways to get people in that's safe. Um, and so I'm just – I know our girls are thrilled. We're going to practice here and, um, and, 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 and prepare like, like, you know, it's the most important game of the uh, year. And, and uh, these games this weekend, the first game will be the most important game of the whole year, and we're going to take it just like that. And I think our fans will appreciate that uh, work ethic and the way our girls are going to go about it. Two out or four out of five of the games will be on ESPN+. Plus. You can catch them there. It starts on Friday at 2.30 against Omaha. Coach? Best of luck this weekend. Best of luck this season. We'll uh, talk to you again soon. Can't wait. Go Pokes. There you go. And with that, let's get another break. When we come back, speaking of the Pokes, we'll talk about the Oklahoma State Cowboy wrestling team headed to Tulsa, getting ready for the Big 12 championships after wrapping up their 47th 
our 47th undefeated season. Truly amazing. We'll talk to Coach John Smith coming up right after this. Butter lettuce over there? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Thank you so much. You bet. Okay. Let's try a little bit here. Hey, Jay, can you grab that? We'll get right on it. Thank you. I know how much you guys love tomatoes, so I have stories to tell you about. Welcome back to the OSU Roundup, and we're joined now and gladfully so by the head coach of the Oklahoma State Cowboy Wrestling Team. That's Coach John Smith. Coach, always a pleasure to have you with us on the show. Thank you. You know, you guys are headed over to Tulsa, getting ready for the Big 12 Championships, and I want to talk about that. But before we get there, 47th undefeated regular season. 47. Is that not amazing? Yeah, it's amazing. You know, it's a... Uh... It's a long history of a great legacy, you know. I'm lucky to be a part of it. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, it was an odd year this year. You know, we, we didn't get to wrestle some of the uh, teams that we normally get to wrestle, especially some of the Big Ten teams. Uh, but, you know, that we did a nice job of finishing the regular season with, with undefeated, you know, and uh, recognizing that uh, it takes a lot of wins to make that happen, and, and we, we did that this season. Well, and the other thing, Coach, again, and, and I've kind of talked to a lot of coaches about this, but I don't think you can state enough just the fact that you did get through this incredible season. You guys got ten matches in. When you look at the top two teams, they only got five matches in out of the Big Ten, some of the Big Ten. So, I mean, that, that should be a celebrated accomplishment as well. Well, I, th I think that's more of a storyline for all of our sports here at OSU. I mean, um, not just wrestling, but men's and women's basketball, uh, of course, our football season, you know. So, you know, I think Coach Holder kind of set the stage that we're going to participate. We're going to, we're going to, you know, we're going to play. And uh, if somebody tests positive, uh, let's put a new player and give it a new, new ath uh, athlete a, a chance to participate, you know. So uh, that was kind of the, the, the stress or the, the the presence that we had is let's let's play sports and uh, we did have a full season. Do you think that that many matches versus maybe some of the other teams along the way is going to be hugely advantageous? Will it will it really matter going in once you get to the NCAA's? I think it should. I, I don't see why it'd be a disadvantage to you. You know, I think uh, being able to get uh, competition in and being able to you know, see some areas where you've, uh, you're, you're really showing some weaknesses. Um, you can identify more situations. So absolutely, you know, I think that it, it does give you a, a chance to uh, analyze where you're at, what you're doing. And I know through the season, it, it allowed me to help this team get better by, by competing uh, rather than not competing. When you look at the Big 12 as a whole, uh, you guys, I mean, it's, this is the 25th season. You guys didn't get to compete last year, obviously, due to COVID. So this will be the 24th NCAA or Big 12 championship coming up, of which Oklahoma State has won 17. Um, I know you don't de-emphasize Bedlam, even though you guys win it in such a great way. You don't de-emphasize the Big 12. But it is so commonplace to take home that trophy. How do you get your guys revved up that, hey, this is, okay, it's, it's about getting ready for the NCAAs, but you know what? This is about conference pride as well. Yeah, well, you know, try losing a few of them, you know, and you, you see what it does, you know. I mean, there's a responsibility. We take it serious. This will be a hard one to get. I mean, this isn't going to be easy. This will be, you know, the last five or six years, uh, this would be a greater challenge. This the, actually would be a nice accomplishment for this team to go in and actually win this Big 12 championship. I think a lot of things are working against us that we need to overcome with, with a few injuries. Um, we're going to see a couple new faces or a, a new face in the lineup at 141 with Caden G. Feller, who's been out all year. And we've lost two guys at this weight class because of injury. Uh, and we're bringing back Caden G. Feller. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a storyline there that's going to make us a little harder. So for this one, we're going to have to go out and, and, you know, we don't deserve anything. We're going to have to earn this one. 
And in fact, you know, 141 is the only place you don't have a pre seed. Uh, you got three top seeds coming in, and uh, you got a lot of top tens. But so while it'll be difficult, obviously you guys have put themselves in a good spot going into Tulsa. Well, as good as you can be. We have, um, we've got some guys that got to compete banged up. You know, I mean, you know, we, we have some, some injuries that, that are serious, but yet uh, <clears throat> we've had guys competing on those injuries, you know, and, and you know, just kind of a, a, an awareness of, you know, that um, how tough you can actually be, you know, and, and developing some, some um, you know, just developing some confidence that, that you're, you can do anything, you know, if you put your mind to it and you're, and you're, and you're focused on uh, performance rather than outcome, there's a lot of things you can do when you're not feeling at your best, you know, and uh, we preach this over and over again that, you know, if you wrestle, you know, there's going to be a lot of times you're not at your best. You're not, you don't feel at your best because of something, a tweaked ankle, a, a sore elbow, what, whatever it may be. Um, these, these, we got a couple guys with a little bit more serious injuries than that, but I think they've learned through the year that uh, you can compete. Well, and it's obviously going to be a fun weekend. The Cowboys competing in the Big 12 tournament. Coach, before we let you get out of here, though, and I know you don't like talking about yourself and, and whatnot, but uh, another state champion out of the Smith household. How, how awesome is that for you and, and for Sam to get that championship? Well, it was exciting. Um, I don't think you, you can get, get used to it. I mean, it's just uh, anytime you're watching your son, you know, compete in anything, mine being wrestling, um, and they reach that level, you know, Sam has always struggled winning through his youth age, and, and here he is winning the state championship. Um, you know, last year he was on um, the second team behind Cal Hughes and um, the number one ranked kid in the nation at the time. You know, he sat behind him, sh showed a lot of patience, and here he did. He won his state championship, this Stillwater High School winning the, the, the state championship. You know, just having a son being a part of that is special. No doubt about it. Well, congratulations to Sam. Congratulations to you guys. Hey, best luck uh, on Saturday and Sunday in Tulsa. Okay, thank you. Hey, that's going to do it for this show. We want to say thanks to Mike Boynton. We want to say thanks to Josh Holliday, Kenny Gajewski, and, of course, John Smith. And that will wrap things up. For Dave Hunziker, I'm Casey Kendrick. We'll see you next time on the OSU Roundup.